Good morning, my dear and precious brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that God is with you this day and always, and I pray that all of your prayers are being answered. God is great, he is wonderful, and he is coming for us soon. Don't be dismayed, don't be downhearted. He tarries, but all will work to his glory. When he comes for us, it's not about us. Remember that. Yes, we get ourselves out of here. Well, we don't get ourselves, but he takes us out of here. He does rescue us. And anyone that says, you know, you're not very um, faithful if you want to escape, he told us to pray to escape all things to come upon the earth, to test those upon the earth. He didn't make us for wrath. And wrath is coming. The wrath of God is on its way. We will have tribulation. We are having tribulation. Christians, true believers, have had tribulation since the day Christ walked the earth. All of the fake religions, even the fake Christian religions, hunted down and slaughtered people who wanted to read the word of God for themselves. It was illegalized to hold a Bible. Do you realize that the churches, the Roman church used to send out people, the Jesuits in particular were made, a force made to go and round up and hunt down people in villages who had Bibles and they did terrible things to them before they killed them. This has been tribulation forever. The Islamic faiths have hunted down Christians. The Hindu faiths have hunted down Christians. All the fake religions. I don't mean they're religions without a basis. They do have a prince a palatee above them and that principality hates Jesus and so we are having and have always had a form of tribulation but God speaks of a different tribulation in the book of Revelation he speaks of the great he puts the word great in front of it this will be the great tribulation we were not meant for that because that is when God pours out his judgments and the righteous were always taken out before God made his final judgments in the days of Noah God took out the only righteous family he warned and he warned for 120 years. Noah preached. He was a righteous man who preached. Don't watch the movies. They are lies. They are made up by Satan. Hollywood is the work of Satan. Even the word Hollywood comes from a pagan holly and wood it is a pagan the hollywood is the wood they used to make the witches staffs and wands out of it is not a godly place its whole premise is based around satan satan was a deceiver he'd been deceiving for many years acting as if he was the good guy he was never Hollywood was a deceiver, acting like the good guy. Now they've declared themselves. We have to have discerning eyes because we are not meant to go into the great tribulation. We can reject God's hand of offer. We can say, no, we don't want to go with you. And then we have to go into that. But please, my loves, get ready if you truly love Jesus. 
if you truly understand that God is offering you an escape out of here, take his hand and be merry because tomorrow we may fly. Literally. I'm not saying it's tomorrow, obviously, but we don't know when, but it could be. It could be. Now, I said it's not about us, and yet then I went and spoke about us. Yes, we are saved, but it is not about us. We are not some special superhuman group of people that suddenly came upon the earth. Many before us have had much greater troubles and withstood. They, we stand on their shoulders. Those in the days of Nero, those in the days of the, um, the gladiator period when the Romans used us for amusement. When Nero lit the street torches with human flame. Their street lights were made from Christians on flame. These people are heroes. We have never suffered such as this. But we kept the faith and this is God is using us just as he used them as an example to spread the faith. This is the end time. We are about to be raptured as glory to God. It is all about his glory. Because we have kept the word of his patience. Well, actually, I'm, I'm dyslectic, the patience of his word. <laughs> because we have kept the patience of his word, he will keep us from what is to come upon the earth. But... When he takes us, what is it showing the world? It's showing those that did not believe or only partially believed, couldn't come all the way with their belief. It is showing them it is true. God is mighty. He did have his hand upon these people and he is fulfilling his word for us. Therefore, they know it will be true that he will fulfill his word for them through through um lot the story of lot those that didn't believe were left and destroyed noah those that didn't believe were left and destroyed that told Noah's family what will happen. They brought that forward, but they forgot. Lot's incident told those people, the Sodom, that God meant what he said. You do the wrong, you are judged. God is not a liar. Satan is. Satan will tell the world that this didn't happen when it's happened. Satan doesn't want you to know that God is true. He doesn't want you to know that God is good, that he does fulfill his promises. Satan cannot fulfill his promises because Satan has a final destination. He has not got a future. So anything Satan promises is a temporary thing. He has temporary power because in the end, he and all of his promises will be cast into the lake of fire. Nothing he has has substance. Only what God has is substantial. So, yes, rapture on track is coming very, very soon. He said, the time for rapture, prepare the bride, get prepared. But now I want to tell you of a dream I had. Um, it was a very quick dream and it was simply this. I was hiding in a, in a big home, a building, and 
I knew other people were out there hiding as well, but somehow we were connected. Somehow we were all believers. I believe this is after the after the rapture. We were all believers, but we had a networking. We could not meet in the open as we do today. Mostly we can meet in the open, even if that's in a shopping mall or, or if that's in a house, wherever. We can still meet, or if it's over the internet like this, we can still meet together and join together, as God said, in the last days, do not forsake the coming together. Even this is coming together. If you're an invalid, can't get out, you can still come together in this form. But there's a time coming when you cannot come together, not just because it's dangerous, but because the next believer may be 10 miles away and there's no transport. When the world turns on believers during the tribulation, you may not know where the next believer is. So there will be some way by the, by the dream, there will be a communication somehow, a network. There will be a network somehow. Then in the dream, we were waiting for a sign. There was a sign to be given. And everyone is watching for this sign, but we didn't know where it was going to come from. And then in front of my eyes, the wall in front of my eyes, it was as if a projection, a movie projector, had put itself images on my wall. It lit up. But it was so very, very fast and I wasn't ready. I was not ready for what happened then. Because what happened was, it was just three lines of words. I knew each line was the same meaning. But I couldn't read it. It was in three languages. It was in Hebrew. It was in Greek. And then it was in Latin. And I could not read it. And um, what on earth is this? And I searched for my phone to get the camera. But before I could organize my camera, I wasn't prepared for that. Before I could take the photo, it was gone. I didn't know what it meant. And in the dream, I'm contacting these other people. Did anyone else see it? Many did not see it. Then there were a few that saw it. Did anyone know what it said? No one understood it. The message in the group that I was in, in this point, nobody knew what it said. And I woke up at that point and I... Father, what was that? What was the message? I didn't, I don't get it. What was the message? And nothing came. So I came out and I settled myself down at my Bible. I opened my Bible and it opened at, in John 19. This was Marvellous. I love the book of John. Isn't it just the most heart-lifting of the Gospels? So I'm reading and my, my eyes put, and there it was. I probably should read it to you. Um, excuse me for a moment. Everything's so small these days. <laughs> um, why don't I read to you what it said, if you don't mind, because it was beautiful. There's John. Ah, uh, 19. Where are we? Come here, you little love. Aha, uh -huh, nilly, nilly, nilly. Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, there we go. John 19. And this is where my eyes came to. And it was, and he bearing his cross. Uh, I came to 1917, if you want to follow it. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called, in Hebrew, Golgotha. 
Now let me just pause there for a moment. Golgotha, the place of the skull. Here's a prophecy totally fulfilled. The place of the skull Golgotha, Golgotha, Gotha, yes, is definitely the place of, and Gol is, is definitely a skull, but it's the skull, Goliath, Gol, the Goliath. History has it and tradition has it, although we don't always go on tradition, but bear with me for this. We know that when David slew Goliath, he cut off his head. And he walked with this head, huge head, giant head. And he returned the body. It never said he returned the head. He gave the body back to the Philistines. But tradition has it he kept the head and it was buried on that hill. That was why it was called Gold. Goliath's place, the place of Goliath's head, his skull. That is why it was Skull Mountain. It was Goliath's skull. So buried in that place, Golgotha was Goliath's head. Get this. God said, the Father said, the seed of the woman shall crush your head and you shall pierce the heels. On that one side, Jesus was planted on a cross. He crushed the head of that skull and he was pierced in the ankles. Just as the Bible had said would happen, he did it. The seed did it. The seed of the woman did that. So, sorry, exciting bit of point of um, information there. I always love these bits. So, that was like a, a little um, exciting point for me. And I'm remembering these things. And, oh, that's right. So, this is something that he is who he is. He said, I am. He is. He is that seed. He is who he said he is. He is the Son of God, whom the prophets of old said, we will call Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. God the Father told us, we will call Jesus Mighty God and Father. We are allowed to say it. Don't let anyone say we can't say that God never said. God did say. He said, you will call him Mighty God. So if anyone is holding back thinking, yes, he's the Son of God, I can't call him God. The, God himself, the Father said, we are to call him Mighty God, not just God, Mighty God. While he's on earth, he is not almighty God because he gives up some part of his divinity um, to come down in, a, in the flesh. But he has still to be called by us. In the word of the Father, we are still to call him mighty God. So don't let anybody scare you out of, for decades, I kept saying he is, Jesus is the son of God. He is the son of God. I couldn't break through that. And I had to be taken back into the Old Testament to find where it said, God the Father said, you're going to call this one, he's my son. You're going to call him mighty God. Wonderful, wonderful counsellor, mighty God, El Gabor. That's what El Gabor means, mighty God. So, um, back to my dream, sorry. <laughs> How does my dream come to life in this, from what Jesus is showing us? 
when we read down to verse 18, so the very next verse after explaining he is the seed, he is the one, he did um, crush the head. He is that one. Then it says, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side one. So one on either side. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, actually, instead of Jesus, he wrote the, the true word, the true name of Jesus, which was, in Hebrew, Jesus was Yeshua, meaning God's salvation. So there's nothing wrong with calling him Jesus. That's the English language. Jesus knows his name in every language. He made every language, so he's not offended. But written in that era, his name, when they spoke of him and to him, it was Yeshua, God's salvation. So it would have read, Yeshua of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This then, verse 20, this title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. In Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin, the same phrase written in three languages. That was what I saw on the wall. It was written in three languages. Why would he flash? It was a very quick, very important thing to know. But why did he flash that there and then? Well, what? It was so quick. It was just so quick. This is the point. When he flashed that there, it was done quickly, earnestly, and many missed it. And many didn't understand. You don't understand the future unless you read the past. I didn't know what that meant until he brought me back to this. All of the answers he has given us, every answer we need, it is in our Bibles. There is nothing new. It is all here. It was shadowed and foreshadowed. It will always be in the Bible. Jesus has already been, by this point, Jesus came before this in the rapture. We are gone. So this vision was a vision of straight after. Why do we need to know and tell people that Jesus is the King of the Jews? Even when, when he was declared that, what happened? The rulers of the Jews... Don't write that change that's put on there. He said he was. Don't say he is. And and Pilate said, I've already written it. What I've written, I've written. It stays. I've just, my own words of that, Val. Um, but the essence, that's what he said. Now, I've done what I've done. You know, go away. He he wrote the truth, he prophesied, he was guided by God to write that on there. And he was rejected. The Jewish people, not all, because remember the original Christians, thousands and thousands of them were the Jews. Our faith is not a new faith. Our faith is the fulfillment of the Jewish faith. But we have been brought in. Jesus is coming for this bride. And this is the church age bride. And this has a start. And he said when the, when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Right? We are at that point. The fullness of the Gentiles is about to come in. 
That was Leah. Jacob was asked to fulfill Leah's time before he was allowed to, to have Rachel. And even though Leah was not the bride he came for and asked for, he fulfilled Leah's time. But he had to work seven more years for Rachel. The Gentiles are about to be fulfilled our time and he's going to faithfully fulfill our time and take us. Remember, Leah had seven sons. There are seven churches. We are the church age. We are about to be fulfilled. But on that sign it said, Jesus, Yeshua, King of the Jews. What happens in the final seven years? That is great tribulation but it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble. And this is the time God turns his face back to Jerusalem. He is no longer the lamb. When he comes next time after the rapture, he is the lion. And the lion has come for his bride. The lion won't be tricked. The lion will fight for his bride, Israel. He comes back as a lion, not a lamb. He's fulfilled the, the lamb. We are the bride of the lamb. But through that time, he fights. Literally, he comes back on a horse, blood-soaked, and he fights for his Rachel. And it's seven years. So we are to remember there is a turning point. If you are, if you are left and are in the great tribulation remember jesus is no longer a lamb he is a lion and he will fight he's no longer a meek shepherd gathering and protecting he laid down his life for us he is about to fight with sword when he comes back for that time, he will fight with a sword and he will rescue Israel. Many, many will be saved when they see us go and they will believe. Just as many believed when they saw Jesus, many believed when they saw the crucifixion and the resurrection, many believed on Lazarus, well, they believed on Jesus after he raised Lazarus. All of these great deeds of God are for his glory that you will believe. And so when we go, and we will go, when we go, many will believe. But have you given the, the word? Is there anyone that you can reach? Do you have a Facebook page with friends? Can you make a small video like this? I tell you what, it's not as hard as you think. You just sit in front of your camera and speak and press a button to send it. That's all. This is not clever. I was terrified the first few times. But it's easy. God didn't make it hard. It will get harder and it'll be impossible soon. But if you can make a little greeting to your family and friends, a small video that just you can put on your Facebook or whatever you use 
the people that do the Twitters and the other things that are out there that I have no idea about. If you've got some little way you can make a small video and just say to your loved ones, hello and goodbye. I'm waiting for the rapture. If I'm not here anymore, it means that the rapture has come. You are left. Here is the word of God. Jesus came to earth as God incarnate, that God so loved the, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. That is still true during the time. It is the gospel that Jesus died. After living a sinless life, he died, crucified, tortured, they have to know the suffering because they will have to suffer as well. He suffered for our sins. He died for our sins. He was whipped. All those things. Tell them as much as you can, but in a kind way. Don't be angry that these people did it. This was all part of God's plan. This was the grace of God to show people that I'm willing to die for you. Show them he died, but no matter what they did, he was he was the God. He conquered death. That even though he died, just as he was able to resurrect Lazarus, and he resurrected many more. You remember the, the young girl he resurrected? There were many he resurrected. But... He was so much God, he was able to resurrect himself from dead. And he did, and he resurrected himself. He paid the price for all of us, for every sin we have ever done, and all he asks of us is to repent and believe. But what does that look like? Tell them what that looks like. If you believe, if you love me, he said, you will do my commands. So tell them that they need to do the commands. They need to love one another. They're not to be liars. They're not to be thieves. They are not to do any of those things. If they believe in him, they won't be liars. If they believe in him, they'll stop fornicating. If they believe in him, they will not accept the mark of the beast. And that is so important. Because accepting the mark of the beast is first commandment, have no other gods. Love the Lord your God with all your heart mind and spirit that is the first commandment to love God and to have no other gods so tell them that you can say it eloquently you know it I've probably missed out something I should have said because I'm just trying to encourage you to do something of your own your own words but use the context of the Bible Show them it is true. Whatever the message you think you can send, ask God. Ask God to speak to you. If you can do it, wonderful. If you can't do that, write a letter. Write a note, a card. Send them a card. If I'm gone, this is what happened. This is what you need to know. Even if you cut and paste Parts of the Bible, I don't mean to cut your Bible up, but a copy of phrases, verses, chapters. Anything that you can cut and paste to give them the knowledge that will spark them. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Give them the word of God before it's too late. Because once we're gone, 
Can you see the laws already changing the hatred towards Christianity? Calling our Bible hate speech. It's not going to be long before Bibles will be burnt again. Just as the Catholic Church did in the Dark Ages, in the times of of the Inquisitions, in the times of the Jesuits' order going out to round up, they burned books, they burned people alive with books. I, I don't remember one of the authors, one of the men who translated the Bible into English. I'm not sure if it was Wycliffe. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but someone of his generation wrote a Bible in the language of the people, put it in the hands of the people. He was hounded up. He was wrapped. Oh, this is horrible, but it happened. The church, the supposed church, rounded him up tied him to a stake, put the Bible on his chest, wrapped him in fleece and wet the fleece so that he would burn slowly and steam. This was what happened to a Bible believer in the time when church became state. This is going to happen again. Doubt, don't doubt that. It may not be a church. It may be a government doing it. But people will once again be banned from the Bible. It is happening all over the world in little bits at the moment. When we are gone, it will be full steam ahead. Warn them, if you can't bring them to Jesus now, warn them that if they see this happen, if they see the rapture that certain people have gone, tell them that it will be so important for them to hold on to the faith because it's temporary. Life is temporary. Eternity is eternal. Please tell them, let them know. Give them snippets of the Bible. If they don't want the whole Bible, give them some verses that they can hold on to in the hard times. But the Bibles will be burnt. Seek ye the word of God while it may yet be found. That's telling you it won't be found soon. So, this is such a serious message but please you and I have hope show them our hope because through our hope we may bring some if they understand what our hope is and why we hope it may be that they will come with us so, God be with you. I know this is a serious one. Every now and again, we really have to get serious because we are at the pointy end. Jesus is coming and he is coming very soon. And you and I have to be ready. But wouldn't it be lovely if we could just get one more person before the time of the Gentiles has come in fully, wouldn't it be lovely if we could just grab one of them and pull them in close and get them home? We don't take them home, but we can let them know why we love Jesus, can't we? Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to know that that person you've been worried about just needed one more word one more message that their ear needed to hear. Not a tickling, but a true and honest word of God. Well, it's gone longer than I thought. 
God be praised. He always is wonderful and faithful to his people. He is faithful to you. Let us be faithful to him. Praise the Lord with all of your heart, mind, your soul, all of your strength. And let's come home. Let's be the family he wanted. God bless you all. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May his love fill you. And may we keep our prayers alive. May we pray for one another. And as he said, they will know you are mine if you love one another. So spread the love. I love you. And I'm so wanting. I want to see you all there. I want to be there. And I want you there. But mostly I want to be with Jesus. Forgive me that I want to see him far more than you. But I still want to see you. God be praised and God bless you. My dear loves. Until we meet. Here or there. Amen. Amen.